Hello everyone, Mr. Lipchick here, and today we're going to talk about market economies. Uh, the, probably the most basic form of economy. Okay, the most common economy today is the free market economy. A market is defined as an arrangement that allows buyers and sellers to exchange things. Markets exist because none of us is able to produce all that we need for ourselves. One characteristic of market economies is specialization. Specialization is defined as concentration of the efforts of individuals and firms on a limited number of activities. Uh, the more you concentrate on a specific thing, the better you usually do. Individuals and firms become expert at producing a small number of goods or services and sell them on the market. A household is defined as a person or group of people living in the same residence. Households are the owners of the factors of production and are consumers of finished goods and services produced by firms. A firm is an organization that uses resources to produce a product which it sells, transforming inputs into outputs. Another word would be a business organization. Factor market is defined as a market in which firms purchase the factors of production from the households. Land, labor, and capital are sold by households in the factor market to firms in order to make a profit or financial gain. Firms use resources on the factor market to sell goods and services to households on the product market. The product market is the market in which households purchase goods and services produced by the firms or businesses. Adam Smith, an 18th century economist who published The Wealth of Nations, believed that markets were largely self-regulated, and there is quite a bit of truth to it. Uh, if there is not excessive government interference, economies have a tendency to bounce back on their own. Smith believed that the forces of self-interest, competition, and incentive made free markets work. Self-interest is defined as every consumer and producer works with his or her own personal gain as his or her priority. So, you know, you go out into the job market, not necessarily to benefit the economy, but to benefit your own individual wealth. Competition is defined as a struggle between producers for the consumer's business. And uh, this keeps markets full and prices low. Uh, if somebody charges too much, they won't be able to compete with the other uh, business competitors. If uh, the products are not very good, then the same thing will happen. And incentive, positive or negative consequences for business decisions. And these create abundant quality goods and services for the economy. So if there is an economic incentive, a potential to gain, uh, people will enter the market and attempt to make higher quality goods. Smith believed that self-interest and competition work together like an invisible hand to regulate the market. It's not something you can see with your eyes, but it's out there. It's a force working to keep the market in line. And as I said earlier, there is a great deal of truth to this assumption. Free markets have many advantages for an economy. One is economic efficiency. Because markets are self-regulating, they can respond rapidly to consumer demands, making only what is demanded at the prices consumers are willing to pay. So there is very little waste because if you waste things, you'll be out of business very quickly. Number two, economic freedom. People have the greatest freedom in their economic choices. Uh, in that they can work where they want, purchase what they want, and produce what they want. 
And three, economic growth. Competition encourages innovation, which leads to economic growth. Four, consumer sovereignty. Free markets offer the widest variety and highest quality of goods and services because the producers have the incentive of having to meet the consumer's desires. If they do not meet the consumer's desires, they will soon go out of business. That concludes our discussion of market economies. I look forward to seeing you in a live lesson. Have a great day.